Okay. Kalima Energy um, sort of summarized on one slide. We have an acreage position in British Columbia targeting the Montney. Um, some years ago, through some sort of clever geoscience, we predicted that there would be a northern extension to the liquids rich zone in the Montney. We backed that up by building our land position. So we've built up a position up to 72,000 acres. We have just recently drilled three wells to validate that prediction, and I'm delighted to say that we were correct. What we're doing now is we're assembling the building blocks for a development, because it's all about uh, egress and offtake and the ability to commercialize what you find. And we found a very nice way to do that while without exposing our shareholders to very much dilution. And so that enables us to go on to the final part of the strategy, which is to find the optimal pathway, and we'll do that through a strategic process, um, to deliver value back to our shareholders. Um, snapshot of the, the, the capital structure of the business, about a $40 million market cap, 30% owned by institutions, 20% by uh, board management and founders, and 50% by retail shareholders. Um, as I said, we have 72,000 acres of drilling rights in the Montney. We're about to convert 35,000 of those acres into long-term production rights. And the business is currently valued at around, well, somewhat just under $600 an acre. And the average transaction metric last year for undeveloped Montney land was around $4,400 an acre. The roadmap going forward, or the roadmap for the whole business, we try to keep things very simple. Um, there's a create, build, and realize um, pathway and strategy. So we did build the land position. We drilled the wells uh, to prove up that initial um, prediction. And I'm delighted to say that the well performance that we got matches or actually probably exceeds um, the results that we saw in, with the adjacent operators. And we flowed at an initial rate of just north of 1,600 BOE per day. Those well results will enable us to come out with a significantly upgraded reserve report. That will happen next month. We're in the middle of our negotiating access now to the infrastructure that we need um, to enable that resource report to be turned into both a, reser uh, a reserve report. And that, um, being able to do that and to put the building blocks of the development in place uh, gives us a very nice position um, as we see the Montney play develop through the impact of, of LNG. And then finally, the, the most important part of the strategy um, always has been um, is to go through this process and to find the optimal way to translate it into value for our, our shareholders. And we don't mind taking this project down the road a little ways, but we do not see ourselves ultimately as the developers of this project. Western Canada, as an investment destination, finds itself in a very interesting place. What makes the Montney work for us is the liquids yield, the light oil and condensate, because there's very strong demand for condensate in Western Canada at the moment. Prices at or sometimes above WTI, um, it gets used in the heavy oil play. We heard some of the, the chaps in the panel today talking about the, the long-term future for gas and specifically LNG. Um, the Montney is a great place to play that game. Gas reserves there, equivalent to about half the total reserves of Gatar. Demand locally for gas increasing uh, quite a bit, mostly in the oil sands play. But the big thing that's going to happen in the basin is LNG. The Canadian government has approved uh, five significant LNG projects. The first of those has started construction, Shell, Petronas, and Partners at LNG Canada. Uh, at $40 billion, that's the biggest infrastructure investment in Canada ever. 
just the first phase of that project will consume 30% of all the gas produced in Western Canada. So it is going to be transformational. Woodside and Chevron have just applied to double the size of their LNG project also at Kitimat. And interestingly, the LNG out of Western Canada has a unit cost 50% that of Australia with the same transportation time into Asia. So I think that uh, explains why we're quite excited about the macro, the macro position um, in Canada. And with the infrastructure that we're developing, we will have direct access into the pipelines that supply that, uh, that LNG uh, project. So the building blocks that we're putting together, you see our land position in yellow. Uh, where we've just drilled the, the three wells and we have that we, we're not going to talk about the results of the three wells. We've, we've tucked that away in an appendix to this presentation, which I'm very happy to share with you on the booth or, or on the platform. Um, but to the north of us, there's an old field called Tommy Lakes. It's a conventional field. It's in the late stage of life and it has some great infrastructure. And we have the ability to access that infrastructure on uh, very advantageous terms. Tommy Lakes can handle up to 50 million cubic feet of gas a day or you know, 8,000 BOE in terms of the equivalent, and it has scope for expansion. Tommy Lakes is connected down through the North River system into the Jedney processing plant, and from Jedney we're seeing the interconnectors going in to all the major pipeline networks that supply the US and will supply the LNG on the West Coast. We need only a 20 kilometer pipeline to tie into that network. And with the wells that we've drilled already, so we have two horizontal wells ready to go on production, we can finance the pipeline construction from the production that will come out of those wells. Now that's a cash flow neutral strategy for the company, but what it delivers is, is hugely significant for us and our strategy. It gives us access to the key infrastructure that we need and our egress route, and it's an expandable egress route. It establishes a long-term production profile and importantly, the liquids yield. Um, we're getting premium prices for those condensates. And it allows reserve booking and access then to reserve-based lending, which significantly enhances uh, the appeal of, of what we have for future partners and potential acquirers. We have immediately next door to us, just to the south, very conveniently, we have uh, an analog where we have a bit, there's a company called Seguero that's been developing the land on our southern border. They've drilled more than 60 wells now and our target all along has been to demonstrate that you can keep going to the north and you're going to see the same or better prospectivity than what uh, you see to the south. We've put a type curve in there for the, the Sawero well, seven to eight BCF type curve, uh, generates very good rate of return even at today's prices. And on the, the, far, the far left of that slide, you see Seguero ranked in terms of its IRR per well against all the other producers in the basin. So that if we can match the performance of what Seguero have been doing with their wells, um, we have the capacity to be one of the top tier producers across the whole Montney Basin. So that has been uh, the target, and that's what we've been trying to achieve with the drilling campaign. As I said, I'm not going to talk too much about the results of that drilling campaign. It's all tucked away nicely in an appendix. But what we've actually found for some very encouraging results, and principally, we've got much better uh, rock properties than the guys round about us, principally porosity and hydrocarbon saturation. So we've either matched or exceeded all the parameters that we needed to see to be able to say that, yes, Seguero is the, the valid analog. And if you look at what's going to happen in our reserves report, this is what was done pre-drill. 475 million BOE equivalent, quite a sizable project. But that was based, if we look at the EURs, based on a range of 5.6 to 6.8, which is now going to between 7 to 8. The condensate to natural gas uh, ratio, um, the natural gas liquids, 
Um, we originally were assuming that more than half of the liquid recovered was going to be the natural gas liquids, which are much lower value. In fact, that ratio now looks like 70-30 in favor of condensate. So if condensate gets WTI and natural gas liquids only get about $22 uh, a barrel, you can see the difference. And we have a lot more well locations because we've opened up a third bench um, in the Montney. Previously, we were looking at 400 wells over two benches. Um, operations, um, well, we don't have to really deal too much with that. 2,500 meter horizontal wells, 92 stages, uh, 1.5 uh, tons per meter uh, propent loading. It all went very well, and we got some fantastic core recovery as well. Now, that um, has been very important in terms of the reserve story. So, in conclusion, the drilling has been very successful. It has met or exceeded all of our expectations. That will lead to an updated reserve report coming out next month, and we can now put in place the building blocks of a development with very little additional investment that's scalable up to around 50 million cubic feet or 8,000 BOE per day. And we can use our existing wells to finance the infrastructure that's needed to deliver that. And that then puts us well on our way to the original sort of direction of our strategy, which was to put in place a process to figure out how to translate this into value directly back to our shareholders. Thank you.